may do it without grumbling without expectation from anyone else but doing it unto the Lord always having hope that his reward will come from above and that way he will not need to compare himself with anyone else. He will not need to listen to what others say. He won't mind about compliments. Whether you compliment or not, it doesn't matter. My compliments comes from above. Hebrews Hebrews, I think 12 verse 2, if I haven't forgotten. It says, fix your eyes to... No, no, I think it is Hebrews... 12.1. 12, huh? 12, fix your eyes to God or to Christ from where cometh your salvation. You know, now that's, what, that's, what is, that, that's what is termed as being equipped. Equipped mentally. Equipped mentally, emotionally, physically, and even in skill. I have seen the ushers here doing everything skillfully. Amen. Hallelujah. Pointing you where there is um, an handkerchief, sanitizing the whatever. Now that is a skill. But also, we have to be uh, prepared mentally. Why mentally? Because sometimes it's so easy to, to raise your eyes and look around the people that you studied with or you grew up with on a different level and you are on a different level. And then you will say, oh my God, why have I wasted my time? Look at so and so where he is right now. He's driving. But I'm not. So you have to be up, 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 up. Uh, uh, equipped mentally that God has his own timing he's never too late and he's never early but he has his divine time the Karos time when that time comes Every knee will bow down. The knees of people who laughed at you, they will bow down. Amen. Hallelujah. So you have to be equipped mentally that you are serving God. You are spending your energy and it's not in vain. No one looks to the Father will be ashamed. Amen. If you serve him with all your heart. So therefore, Physically, skillfully, mentally, and emotionally. Emotionally, at times you may feel down. You may feel tired. You may feel like you're useless. Now let me tell you something. Whatever you feel is not true. Because we don't walk by feelings. We don't walk by dreams. We don't walk by how we feel. We walk by faith. Whether you feel weak. 
you are strong in the Lord. Whether you feel sick, you are healed in the Lord. Whether you feel poor, you are already made rich in the name of Jesus. You Whether you feel ugly, unloved, you are the beloved in the kingdom of God. For God is a respect of no persons. Whether you feel you are the most foolish, come on, praise God for that. Because God chooses the foolish things of the world to ashamed the wise. And the reason why God chooses the foolish simply because they will not pride in themselves. But they will totally depend on him. And when you are weak, that's when God's grace is sufficient in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now let's go back to that verse again. The reason why we come to church before I go to the, uh, to the topic there. So, uh, we are called for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. So what? So that the body of Christ may be edified. Other translations say may be built. Now let me tell you something. God builds his work in two ways. Both spiritually and physical, physically. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In numbers. Amen. Hallelujah. There's something we call at home. How do we call it? Uh, yes. No, 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 not numeric. I've, I've forgotten the right word. But, but both. In, okay, well, in terms of numbers and also in terms. Huh? Yes, holistically. While growing in numbers, but also growing spiritually. In quality and quantity. The church of Christ right now, we focus so much on quantity. When we are many, we think the Holy Spirit is there. But both are quite essential. It is good to be so many. But it is worse when you are many, and, 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 but, but, uh, but in terms of quality, you are weak and yeah. We become a nuisance to the world. When people look at us, they can't see Christ. In our speech, in our way of life, and in our faith. Amen. So all the things must go hand in hand. We have not, uh, but, but this is why the Bible says just so that we, we may equip the saints and the purpose of equipping them to build the body. The pastor is the shepherd of the sheep. And the pastor does not give birth to sheep. It is the sheep that gives birth to sheep. The work of the shepherd is to feed. And then the work of the sheep is to produce. First of all, they give wool. Then milk. And then also 
give birth. So who is supposed to go and evangelize and bring all the people, all of them? Who is supposed to do that? It is us. Let me we preach the gospel but don't forget the gospel is preached in two ways in audio and video in words and in action people must see that even your life is, 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 is the gospel itself. Because you are the light of the world. You are the salt. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants all of you to come driving. Whether you want it or not, that's where you are going. And you will drive it. And you will drive it. Amen. Because that's God's will. So, so that now both the pastor and the ministers and those they minister to may all reach to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To the perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And why do we need to be there? Because there are wrong teachings. Verse 14. It says, Dugamba. Verse 14. Okay. So that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of teaching, doctrine, by trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Orono tulemengo kubeda nate abana abato. Ngatu yuga yuga, ngatu tuwalibu angaburi impewo, yoku igiriza. Mubukusa wabantu, mungwe, no 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 Amina. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, that's why we come. That's why God has brought you in this church. To be equipped for your ministry. And your ministry is about to reach to the people. But also to use your gifts to go out and work and bring in money. Then, you will also be mature, you and the people you are helping. Amen. Hallelujah. All of you, you may reach to the full knowledge of the Son of God. And you will no longer be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Oh, there is this teaching about this, and then you run. Oh, and again this, and then you run. Oh, and people have a false mentality. But you know what? There, there's an anointing there. If, that, if, I, if I'm under that anointing, my life is going to change. Who told you? Who told you? God in his wisdom. He knows every place. And he has ordained everyone in that area. Which is suitable for him. Oh, let me speak a little bit further on this. Do you know why the church is weak? And the people are still poor. Because of disobedience. When they are born again in a certain area, in a certain location. 
They move themselves. When they look with their naked eyes. And listen to every doctrine. And then think that maybe that's where my salvation will come from. Now let me tell you. If you can remember everything, I mean, if you can't remember anything, remember this. God is a God of location. Say location. Say location. Location. God is a God of time. God is a God of purpose. Now, when you look in the scriptures, Jesus had to be born in Bethlehem and to be carried to Egypt only to be brought back so that he may grow in a, in, in a, a region called Nazareth. You know that when Joseph was coming back after the death of Herod, he wanted to go back to another town, to go back to Bethlehem, I think, maybe. But the angel appeared to him at night. He said, don't take him there. Take him to Nazareth. Because it will be fulfilled that he's a Nazarene. But when time the fullness of time had come. Jesus went to Galilee to fulfill the scriptures in Jeremiah that blessed are the shores of Galilee. The, 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 the places where darkness is, the great light has appeared. But when time came for him to die, he turned to his disciples. No, he turned to his disciples. He turned. And he said, the time has come now. Where everything in the scripture will be fulfilled. For we are going to Jerusalem because no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. In other words, according to scriptures, I can't die until I'm in that location. And then the Bible says he. He strengthened his face, his face like a flint. Like a, 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 a ginger. And he went purposefully to Jerusalem because that's where death has to occur. What do we learn? In case he doesn't go there, he can't die. And if he can't die, then we cannot receive salvation. In the same way, God is a God of a geographical location for everyone. He knows why you were born again in this church. Not anywhere else. Not under Ben Hin. Or Andrew Womack. But yes, they can mentor you. They can bless you. But when you are here, okay. Amen. Now let's pray. And within a few minutes, I'll just share a few words about this, and then we go. My heavenly Father, thank you. I glorify your holy name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the first session. Now bless them with the words, with the few words that I'm going to share with them. In the name of our Lord Jesus.
Amen and amen. Amina and amina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I don't know why I felt like to speak like that, but I think it's the Holy Spirit anyway. Uh-huh. So stay put. David said, David said that I stood still in the house of God like a tender shoot. Daudi Agamba Nay Mirida, Nenuera Munyumba Ya Katonda. Amen. Hallelujah. You know why? Hallelujah. Wind came and blew this side, but I, I made sure my roots stay there. Kuvanga omuyaga newe gwaja ne gunju yo kunzi zenu no kunzi zenu nzenakaka santi sigala wendi. Sometimes wind of disaster, wind of maybe uh, 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 of malicious talk, winds of whatever, of rumors will come, they will shake you, but you stay in your position in your church. Then once you do that, then you will become a tree and you will bear fruit. Okay, so let's go uh, straight into the word. So that we may share a few things. First um, Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15. I will begin from verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 14. For if I pray in tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Verse 15. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will also pray with understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. And I will also sing with understanding. Now what does it mean singing in the Spirit or singing in tongues? And what is the scripture saying? When they say singing in the spirit or praying in the spirit, it simply means speaking and singing in tongues. Which is the act of worshipping in depth of the spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Allowing the Holy Spirit to help you sing and pray in the depth of God's best interest and knowledge. Amen. Now, we can pray in, in understanding. But also we can sing in understanding. Our beautiful worship team has been singing in understanding. And they were, they were doing it perfectly. But God wants us even to go a little bit higher. So that we may sing it to solo kuyimba in the way he intended. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you, will you will come to understand what I mean as I go on. Now, we will sing in the spirit and in understanding. Now, what does it mean to sing with understanding? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 15 suggests that singing with understanding means singing knowing what you are doing. 
with awareness and comprehending the words you are singing within your mind and it can be equally applied to the, uh, to the act of singing or function of the voice as an instrument. So when Paul says, I will sing with understanding, he means, or praying with understanding, he means, you, you can go ahead and do with your voice, using your voice, singing with your awareness. Kati Paulo wa agamati nze na imbi anga na amagezi. Aba tegeza. Chogenda kuyimba. Nenga vyo imba vyo nobi tegeda bulu unji. But there is also singing in the spirit. Na yate la waliyo na kuyimba mwoyo. Whereby your understanding is unfruitful. Aonge vyo wazo vyo muna nge tebiche abala bibala. You do not understand exactly what you are saying. Nga nebiyo yogera kweke njini tobi tegeda. Maybe praying in tongues, singing in tongues, you are singing so well, but your mind, the Bible says, is not understanding it. Then the devil will whisper to you and say, you are mad. Don't you see this is foolishness? But the foolishness of God is greater and much wiser than the wisdom of men. It's, Paul is encouraging you that do it. Okay, how do we sing from the Spirit? Now, singing in the Spirit, I will also add on praying occurs when we partner with the Holy Spirit. As I'm praying or singing but we are also being counseled that we should not do it in the congregation except for a short time or as directed by the Spirit. Because once you do it among people people will be confused they will not understand what you are saying but if it's for a short time it's okay now the reason why Paul uh, uh, taught so much on this in the Corinthian church because the Corinthians had a habit of over exaggerating everything a pastor or leaders, even um, a, a, a coordinator would come on the pulpit and begin to coordinate in tongues. Robo sakandara bako shikayandara ba sikandara. Katino Paulo kule mera kubine kanisa wano weyariye tuuse. Ti coordinator, obano omusumba, obano omuyimbi. Yenabu ya janga maso gaba, tunga atandi kila we nimi. Nga yogela na bomu nimi. Ribo shikata ya katimuwa ba manji. Now, because of time, if when you read chapter 14, the, uh, the entire chapter 14, Paul is saying, is telling the church, please don't be infant. Be infant regarding to sin, but don't be infant in your understanding. Know that you are mature. You can't do that. Otherwise, how will people say amen? But when you are alone, praying, or when you are just all of you are praying you can go ahead and pray in the spirit pray in tongues but also you can sing while everyone is praying you can sing according to the voice that the Holy Spirit has given you and how can we do that we do that when we, 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 we decide to partner with the Holy Spirit because at that time we fully understand that our own minds are unfruitful but heavenly words come out uh, 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 come which come from God and originate from God 
come on the inside of us. Amen. Amen. We allow the heavenly words, the heavenly singing, to come and saturate in our minds and, and, and our spirits so that we switch off the mind and then we sing with the spirit as, as we partner together with the Holy Spirit. Now, as I'm winding up, why are we encouraged to sing? I mean, to, uh, why are we encouraged to sing in the Spirit and also to pray in the Spirit? Why? Why does Paul encourage us? For two reasons. Number one, because of our weakness. We are weak. Not, not in strength, but we are weak in terms, of, in terms of knowing what is right and what is wrong, what will happen and what will not happen. What exactly we need. Not what we desire. Amen. 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 So uh, when you read in Romans chapter 8 verse 26. And up to verse 27. Romans chapter 8. Um, uh, uh, on the projector are you there? Okay, because I don't want to open it. Romans 8, uh, verse 26. Amen. Okay, thank you, the projector. Now, listen to these words. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. We have different kinds of weaknesses. Sometimes we pray out of jealousy. Sometimes we pray out of competition. God give me a car. So that so and so may know. I'm tired of being mocked. They have to see the best of me, Lord. Now that's a general weakness. Does it mean God doesn't want to give you a car? Absolutely not. God desires that you may have everything. But he wants you to get to know the kingdom of heaven first and then the rest will follow. Seek the knowledge of the kingdom. Seek what Christ did for you. And who you are in him. And what you are supposed to do for him. Then the rest will follow. But for us we seek first the things. And then we say then we will seek later the kingdom of heaven. God, if you give me marriage, God, if you give me this, God, if you give me this, then I will serve you, then I will serve you. That's not the way things work. Now the Bible says you, you don't have because you do not pray. But also when you pray, you pray amiss to get those things to, 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 for your gratification. God, give me this. Me, me, me. But when you are mature, you pray to receive so that you may provide for the vision of your church. Because I'm a child in there. I mean, now that is also a weakness. Another weakness. There are certain things we think we need, and yet there are those who are Im who are there are those who are the immediate needs. God give me a car. But God knows that tomorrow the devil has laid a strategy either to cause an accident or to cause pain among your beloved ones. Mm -hmm. 
But for you, in your weakness, you don't know that. You simply say, God, I don't care about anything. Give me a car. But tomorrow, there is a, a laid plan to bring sorrow to your heart. For the loss of your, maybe your, one of your beloved ones. So that's why the Bible says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. We do not know what we ought to pray for. It doesn't mean we don't pray. But we don't know what exactly we need. Because I don't know what will happen tomorrow. I don't know what is about to happen to me. Or maybe on my beloved ones. Or some of the things that I'm doing. Maybe in my businesses. All I know is I need this, I need this, that's what I need. It doesn't mean God doesn't want to give you that. He says, he's simply saying... We do not know what we need to ask at that moment. The other thing is good, but maybe it can wait. But there is this one which can't wait. But, but the spirit, but the spirit, uh, here it says, we do not know what we ought to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which words can't be uttered. Now that he, he knows the mind of God. Verse 27. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So therefore, those are some of the general weaknesses. Another weakness is we do not know what we are meant to be. Now listen to this. What eyes have not seen and what ears have not heard those are the very things that God has planned for his saints. Now the question is how can you pray for anything your eyes has never seen and your mind has never understood. So that, that means you will pray for only you think you know. As I'm winding up, let me give you a story. When I was growing up, as a young man, I started preaching the word uh, and pastoring at the age of 16. But I, th 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 there's a moment when I prayed because I was living in a small house. And that house was too old. If you knock the door, the door will fall in. The best thing is to call me so that I come and remove the door. The house was small and eaten by, uh, 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 eaten by ant hills. By, 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 by uh, termites. The termites had eaten all the trees in there Kati and those that, uh, and created holes for rats to run in. So as a servant of God, I used to live there. Very poor and, and, and you know, so I began praying and I said, Lord, First of all, I prayed for a base so that 
people who chased me away from my family, they may know that God provides. And I was told that if I sowed a seed, God will give it to me. And I gave my best seed, but actually I never saw a benz. So after two years, I gave up the idea of having a benz. Now I said, God, please, I think what I need is at least a small house. So I had gone to visit my elder sister somewhere in Kaboa. And I saw a small house. It had two rooms with a small bathroom in there. There is no water, but just a hole to take out water. Very small, but very beautiful with paint. They had painted it white with this. It had um, a one facet uh, uh, iron sheets. So when I looked at it, I said, my God. To me, that was my dream. I mean, it became my dream. I started praying. I prayed to God to give me that house for two years. The house was uh, 740,000. Seven hundred forty. Amen. And I started praying for that money. I prayed in the spirit. But I prayed in my understanding. In my understanding. That house. But as I switched in the spirit, the Holy Spirit interceded according to the will of God. But in my man, in my understanding, I prayed in my weakness. But in the spirit, the spirit helped me to pray according to the will. Amen. So one day, I was invited in Nairobi. And I went to preach. I preached the word. And God performed miracles. There was a lady who had been bedridden for 12 years. They were brought, and among the people, the sick people were brought, that lady was brought. Also. And as I was praying, she stood up. The husband was so happy. And when people saw miracles, I mean, it was awesome. Now, I was called in the office. And they said, uh, what can we do for you? Man of God. But at that time, I was full of fire. I had read the scripture. Freely you are given, freely give. So I turned to, the, to this couple. And I said, thank you so much. Freely I was given. And freely I give. I had forgotten about the house. So, early in the morning when I was going back, I, I went on the bus park, of, 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 uh, it was, the, 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 the bus was called Akamba. So I had booked and I sat on the window. As I was sitting, I noticed a car. But that car was unique because I had seen it. And I was like, oh, this car resembles, you know, that, that car that I saw at the conference. And for sure, when the couple came out, they were the very people that I had seen. And I knew they were looking for me. Maybe to say bye. And so I, 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 I um, 
I, I peeped out of the window and I said, Hey, I'm here. God bless you. And they said, Yeah, we are looking for you. Please, God bless you. They got an envelope and gave it to me. Now, during those days, no one expected an envelope. No, that for all of us knew envelopes were to carry letters. So I I knew that they had given me a letter and uh, it was a testimony. I mean, they had written their testimony telling me how. I mean, they were you are testifying. I got the envelope and I put it in my bag and I said, I will read it when I get to Kampala. I mean, to Entebbe. And when I reached Entebbe, I unpacked everything and put the, bar, the, 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 the letter on the table. At the back of my mind, I was like, I'm not going to bother myself. I know what they are telling me. They're telling me I was sick for 12 years. We were like this. We went, we went from one hospital to another, you know. I, already they had told me. So in my mind, I was like, Already they have told me their testimony. Why should I bother myself to read? After two weeks, while I was praying, I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, read that letter. And I said, okay. I opened the envelope. These airmail envelopes. I found there $400. At that time, it was my first time to get dollars. I called my elder in the church. He used to work in Kampala to go and exchange. He brought back the money. Do you know how much it was? 750,000. God completely provided for what I needed. For that big dream that I have. For that vision that I've been praying in my understanding. But which is not on the will of which is not of the will of God. So I called Mr. Wanga, who was my engineer. I said. We have got the money. Tomorrow we are beginning. So I went to thank God. To, to worship. As I was worshiping. Praising God. The Holy Spirit told me. Get that money. Take it. To, to my house. For the building of my work. And I said God. I thought. So I battled a little bit. I said, okay. So I took the money. And I gave it there to. Uh, 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 we are still building the church, but it was half roofed. When I did that, the following morning when I was praying, as I was opening the Bible to read, I. I I, I came across a word which I don't even remember where it is in the scripture, I mean in the, in the book of Proverbs but I think it may be around a Proverbs 18 I read it but according to the spirit this is how I understood it finish my outdoor activities then I will build you house and brothers and sisters I thought God is going to do it the following day maybe the next year for 20 years I had not seen the house 
But the Holy Spirit helps in our weakness. When he prays according to the will of God, he strengthens us. He encourages us to hold on until we see the will of God manifest. So after some time I got married and we got kids and my wife used to, to say but for how long shall we stay in renting? And I told her God told me. So every money that I would get God would, would remind me give it, give it, give it. But you know what? Sometimes you get tired and you say ah, well maybe so there is one lady who came to me and said, Pastor, I know you will never build. Now we have been with you for almost 20 years. I want to sell you this house. Buy it at any rate that you want. And the payment mode is, uh, is so flexible that it will depend on how you want to pay. If you want to pay one million every year or after two months, it's okay. It sounded good. But the Holy Spirit whispered to me and he said, no. That's not the house I have for you. But on the outside, it was so beautiful. It, it had a very big compound. And my wife and my associate pastors, they said, Ah, pastor, this is God. So anyway, I was convinced somehow. So I went to the bank. I borrowed money. 20 million as a down payment. We negotiated that I will pay it. Uh, I will buy it at 150 million. We had agreed. Amen. Hallelujah. So I, I gave a down payment of 20 million. After I had paid in installment, I had paid 75 million. When we are about to enter, something happened. These estate developers came and they took it. Fraudantly. Prudently. So the, the, the lady who sold us the house fell sick. Now, being unconscious, they, f they connived with the cousin of the lady and they used the thumbprint. They paid to the police, they paid to the LOC, they paid every, I mean, they went around that there is no way you can get the house. So when my wife went there, that's when she was arrested and we knew, oh, something is wrong. She was, so we went to the police and we presented our papers that this house belongs to us. We, had, we have already bought it. These people have just bought it right now. So we are the full owner. And the police had already bribed the policemen. So we were arrested. But the policemen But at that time, amazingly, I wasn't angry. I wasn't sorrowful. I started to, to sing in the spirit. And to pray in the spirit. And to thank God. Because I was reminded that God had told me that he, I will not buy a house, but he will build me a house. And actually in the beginning I had you know, I, I, I felt so, but because of the pressure, I succumbed to the pressure. 
Or pressure, you won't never gamble by your grave. Nagin Nasarong and the Chivalibo get Dava. But at that time when I started singing, and I was giving thanks, people thought maybe I was mad. And some of them were asking me, oh, why, why are you acting like that? I said, because the Spirit knows what is best. The Holy Spirit told me, I finish his work, he will build me a house. Not that I will buy a house. He told me he will build me. So this was in violation of the will of God. And that's why all the things are happening. You know what? During that week, that's when I received a call. Someone wanted to meet me in Sheraton. And I told him that you know, I'm very, very busy. I don't think I can make it. He said, oh, please, just spare me only five of your minutes. But please, I beg you, meet me. Meet us here at Sheraton. So I drove and I went to Sheraton. When I reached there, someone gave me a card. And I thought maybe it's a card for baptism or a card for a whatever function or whatever. But as I was, you know, curious just to know whether it's a card for what, as I was reaching, I mean, as I was going, I opened the card. Now, these are the words. Dear Pastor Hubbard, we have known you for over 18 years. We have seen the way you serve God. That everything you have belongs to God. But you have denied yourself every good thing. Please, if you don't mind, allow us to build you a house which does not exceed or which does not go below 800 million. But someone is begging. So, why, what do we understand here? Pray in the spirit, but also pray in your understanding. Why should you pray and sing in the spirit? Because the spirit intercedes according to the will of God. But the mind according to our own understanding. Sometimes what we pray for is too small in the eyes of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So keep on praying in the spirit. Sing in the spirit. The Holy Spirit will pray Pray according to the will of God. According to the things that you have, your mind has never understood and your eyes has never seen. Now when you come to my home, you will see a mansion something that has never entered in my mind. But for me, what was in my mind, it was something else. So pray in the Spirit because the Spirit helps your weaknesses. Sometimes for you, you pray, I mean, sometimes we pray for our partners because there's someone that I see physically. And yet when you speak in when you go into the spirit that spirit knows all things. He says my dear girl. That one no, that's not your stake. Let me show you what I have for you. Let me show you the woman that I have for you. And then sometimes things fall apart here. And then you cry. He has left me. She has left me. All it is in the design of God. When the will of God is manifested, that's when you say, Oh my God! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Thank 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you it happened. Thank you that we failed. I wouldn't have met this extravagant, uh, uh, glorious miracle. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because of time, we can't go any further. So God bless you. Encourage you. Strengthen you. May God bless you. Strengthen you. Encourage you. To keep praying in the spirit. And to sing in the spirit. But also to pray in your understanding. And to sing in your understanding. The best is yet to come. Things that has never entered in your mind. Even your eyes has never seen. Those are things you are about to encounter. You are blessed when you pray in the spirit. You are blessed when you sing in the spirit. Because you are calling the things that your mind has not seen. You are calling the things that are not as though they are. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord encourage you. May the Lord be make you fruitful. May the Lord enlarge you. He will enlarge the things you do. He will enlarge your businesses. He will enlarge your marriage. He will enlarge your homes. He will enlarge your finances. He will enlarge everything of your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen, amen and amen. amen.